one thing that we didn't talk about, but we're getting ready to talk about with Jerry, is okay, we're adelgid, 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 but what about elongated hemlock scale that gets on hemlock and can really make them look really bad? Not typically a killer, but it makes them look bad. And we do have problems with that, and especially in the Christmas tree industry, this elongated hemlock scale loves Fraser fir Christmas trees, and it's a very difficult pest to control uh, with insecticides, because scales are a broad range of pests, but the armored scales are especially difficult to control because they are in fact armored, right? They have a hard shell on them, and you can spray that hard shell with all kinds of stuff, and it'll just literally roll right off their back. And so these neonicotinoids have some effect through their systemic activity, which they can get up into the plant tissue, and, and then the insect can feed on it. But we've been trying to control this scale. We're having a lot of trouble Get and you know shipping Christmas trees and ornamental plants out of state because of pests and one of our main pest problems right now for shipping out of state is scales and specifically with us because we work with Christmas trees a lot is this elongated hemlock scale because you you know you, it's hard to get a hundred percent control of this and so you get your tree. And you can't see these scales. There might be just a few on them. In the house, everything's fine. Then you chunk it out in the yard after Christmas. And the concern is in Georgia or Virginia or Texas, is that elongated hemlock scale going to jump on your ficus or your camellia or your cryptomeria or something else and then cause more of a problem? And, you know, one meeting we had. That's where we're hiring, we've hired a new entomologist to work with the state. Um, was one of the big growers said, you know, Wisconsin or somewhere said, we don't want your Fraser fir Christmas trees because you're shipping scale up here and we don't want that scale. And if we start losing states that won't let us bring our trees in, then we've got a problem. <laughs> well, and, yeah. Our commodity. And scale, scale wasn't a problem until we got hemlock woolly adelgid. Yeah. So, so when, when we first started getting in Avery, you can walk across the you used used to be able to you can't do it anymore. You used to be able to walk, yeah, yeah. step up, yeah. You used, you used to be able to walk across the county and never step out of Fraser Fir Field, but at the same time you couldn't also step out of Hemlocks. And so when Hemlock Willie Dudgeon came in, you know our first tree with Hemlock Willie Dudgeon I found in '97. Mm -hmm. It was at Grandfather. It was uh, by the Parkway at Christus at Christus Country Store over in Pinola. And the day after that, I went over to see Pete and drove up there and they had it They had it up there as well. So it was like within two weeks, two locations had it. And within about a year, every, lo every location I looked at in Avery had, had him locally at Delgin. About that same time, scales started coming on to be a, a, a major problem. And this is, this is a picture of the scale and, and we'll sort of go through this thing. The last cycle with the long get him on scales has two overlapping life cycles. And, and I can never say that's async, asynchronous, mm -hmm. is that correct? So that means you have all life, cycle, all life stages at the same time. Some scales, you have all the crawlers at one time, and then you have all the adults at one time. With a long gate hemlock scale, you have crawlers throughout the entire year. Once they have crawlers, they'll crawl, they crawl out, and once they find a good feeding spot, they molt and they stay right there. The females will never move again, but the males will stay there until they mature and at that point in time, they will they will go out and, and uh, uh, fly for a couple of days and mate and die. So the picture on the left is where they Forest Service said we had the long end hemlock scale. The picture on the right is where we have it now. So it has spread quite a bit. One of the things that the Jill Sabbatham did before she retired is she did a research project with Florida, looking at the species of plants that Florida was concerned about. Well, they had to go down to the arboretum in Atlanta to get these 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 endangered plants and they were being grown underneath hemlocks that had scale had had the, had a scale on it so we're like okay that's a toss up um, so the immature of the females have three stages of development and the males have those three stages plus two more a pupa a pre-pupa and a pupa stage 
Um, they have no mouth, males have no mouth parts. They fly for a couple days, they mate, they die. But it takes 16 weeks for it to complete its life cycle. But again, you have at multiple stages across the whole, whole situation. The symptoms of it on Fraser, which is usually with, with hemlocks before the adelgid, I think Blair, there was one tree that Lear brought my attention out there on 221 in Fosco on Church Road that had scale. And that was like the first scale we ever saw on a hemlock. And uh, it was it was mostly the Sinclair and Johnson book had, had a listing in there saying that scale will not kill the hemlocks. But in that particular case, scale killed the hemlock. And once the adelgid came in and weakened the trees, it's like the scale just proliferated and came all there. Then it jumped onto the Frasers, which is next door. So the symptoms on Frasers, if you can see that, is a modeling, like a yellow look. That's a heavy population. And then in, in around May or June, you'll see that white fluff. And one of the things we found out about the white fluff is, again, since it has all life stages at all times of the year, when you get a cut tree and you put it inside of a house, you get you get natural flocking on the tree. It, the males, the males pop out and leave the flocking. Um, and so that's that's one way we can tell whether those these guys are very difficult to tell if they if you kill them on a in a treatment. So here's just some more more symptoms uh, of, of what it looks like. And again, uh, they're pretty unsightly. As far as what the tree looks like, you can have a tree that looks perfect and and still have scale problems. So here's the issues facing. If you're trying to come up with a way to manage this pest, here's the situation you have. You have multiple stages, so you just can't spray one or two times. You have to spray at the right time. Long-term life cycle. You know, the, the females can be good for a year or more. So therefore they can lay eggs and get made again, lay eggs and keep on going. Um, there's very few pesticides that are effective. And on the landscape side of things, you only have really one or two right now. Uh, hopefully we can, we can, we're gonna be playing with some insect growth regulators, uh, such as distance or fulcrum, as well as with safari. Um, but even in the Christmas trees, the only other chemical we have that y'all don't have would be dimethylate, which is an OP, which kills everything it touches. So, we, you know, you don't really wanna, you, that's not a really a good choice, um, but by the same token, it is right now is one of the few choices we have. Um, they're very, they can be very hard to see. So like when you're scouting, you know, I was helping a graduate student scout and we were scouting these, these uh, blocks of trees and they look, they look great. And we look and look and look and we find two or three trees out of a hundred with this particular pest on it. Well, if you don't control it then, it's gonna, it's gonna continue to go through the whole field. And we do have a predator, um, a, a little little wasp. I can't think of the name, Citrina, um, that'll attack it. But it doesn't get a high enough population to beat the scale back. Scale would end up with like 60% death every given year. Well, that's for, for agricultural purposes. It doesn't beat it back. But what we've observed, like working with hemlocks around in the forest or around these developments is that the um, the scale will outbreak and be like whoa you know we'll look at this and like really present itself and then over the next two or three years these wasp populations will build up and it kind of brings it down mm -hmm. like you said the 60 yeah. percent it brings it down to where the tree can tolerate it a little more and um, even even in Fraser's you know we're we're trying to find chemicals that will enhance that particular predator so that we don't have to keep reinventing the wheel every, every, every year. Um, and the last thing that makes it more difficult to work IPM with the long gauge hemlock scale is that this pest is regulated. So in Florida, if you drive down to Florida with a Fraser fir and they inspect it, and you have a whole truckload of Fraser fir, and they inspect all you know the 700 plus size trees on there, if they find one scale on one branch on one tree, they stop the load and send it back. So they expect 100% control. And there's nothing that'll give you 100% control. So there's five states, five or six states right now that will do that. Florida being the, the biggest, because that's the largest part of our market. And so our guys are trying to have to make clean trees, which is impossible. 